seemed light years away. Well, not if my next guest has anything to say about it. Sebastian Thrun is an adjunct professor at Stanford University. He specializes in robotics, artificial intelligence, and education, among many other things. He founded Google's moonshot factory called Google X, as well as Udacity, a company dedicated to bringing tech education online. He led Google's self-driving car team, and he has been called the father of the self-driving car. Now he has set his sights on the skies. He is the CEO of Kitty Hawk, a company working towards revolutionizing transportation by making the dream of personal flying vehicles a reality. Welcome, Sebastian. Sorry, good seeing you. Why are you doing this? What was the, is there an origin story here? I've always wondered if you can make transportation safer. And self-driving cars, this tragic story of a, of a good friend of mine who, who died in a traffic accident. But at some point, it daunted on me, if we stay on the ground, if we keep using roads and bridges and tunnels, we won't get rid of congestion. We will only have an increasing number of, of wait times and, and, and traffic. And then I asked myself, why don't we just fly? The, the, the sky is empty. The sky is so ample. It's so big. Why can't we invent something that flies us? Why can't we to take our car and fly to work? So, you, you know, Peter Thiel has famously said, we, we, we thought that this technology revolution would get us flying cars, and instead all we got was 140 and characters. he's wrong. He's wrong. You're working on flying cars. You have a video that you haven't shared with the public yet, and, and it looks like a helicopter. It takes off vertically, land, transitions to a horizontal plane, then lands vertically, and you you feel like you've achieved a test flight with this vehicle, right? How far along are you? Yes, we've been working with this, uh, with NASA and with a professor at Stanford named Elon Crow for about six to seven years. And in around 2013, we started flying uh, our first electric aircraft. And uh, the video that we show is a transition we did where we flew vertically and then transitioned to about 60 miles per hour horizontally and then safely landed again. Uh, since we made a lot of progress. So when I think about this, I'm also thinking, my God, there's going to be chaos up there. You're going to have these drones, uh, you know, with humans in them, and they're going to bump, bump into each other. There'll be traffic in, this, in the sky, just like there's here, except it's dangerous, because if somebody bumps into the other, they're going to crash and die. And I agree that there's an issue about how to deconflict um, flying vehicles if all of us use them every day to and from work. But there's much more space in the sky than on the ground. And having worked in self-driving cars, I can tell you, there's lots of stuff that you can hit on the ground that doesn't exist in the air. Let's do it this way. So on the ground, say you have two roads, and, and they're at a right angle, uh, and, and people drive this way and drive this way. To deconflict cars, we put in things like stop signs, traffic lights, to make sure that we don't bump each other. In the air, what you do is you let these guys go 100 feet higher than these guys, and all of a sudden, they can just fly both at the direction they wish. By having this third dimension, by having the, the altitude, you get so much more space that the deconflicting issue becomes much easier in the air than on the ground. And so uh, you use this for short trips. Um, you, you, you're, you're able to do it. But again, I'm thinking that means lots of people are grocery shopping at the same time. But you look at a city like New York, a city like Chicago, a city like Beijing, and you still think, Look, Everyone can go grocery shopping in the sky. If I talk to my friends in New York that cross the Lincoln Tunnel every day, I think there's a, there's a real pain point here. If you were to cross the Lincoln Tunnel in the sky, it would take two or three minutes. Okay, but it is a vision. Uh, I mean, it took, uh, in New York in particular, between 1900, where almost all transportation was horse-based, and 1930, where almost all transportation was car-based, it took 30 years to, to implement this vision. That doesn't mean we are wrong. It just means it's going to take some time. We have to work out the technology. We have to work out the regulations and airspace management. But on the logical base, I think we will transition from a society that is ground-based, where all transportation is ground, to one where even short range transportation will eventually be in the sky. What's the cost? It's actually, we, we haven't set a price point for our vehicle yet. But if you work it out, a flying car shouldn't cost more than a regular car. Wow. And are there any kind of implications here? Uh, you know, um, the crime, terrorism, I'm wondering, you know, this, this is a pretty powerful vehicle in some sense and that it can go anywhere. Look, the way I look at this is um, almost anything you can buy can be used in a bad way. Even your kitchen knife can be used in a bad way. Um, we're working very hard on making this a very safe technology and we believe very firmly 
that a flight vehicle should and must be safer than a ground vehicle. You have another vehicle called the Flyer. What is that? It's a very small, it's the smallest vehicle we've built. And it's, it's there as a, as a personal fun vehicle. We fly over water, bodies, and so on. And it, it enables people to learn how to fly in five minutes and take to the skies. So it's like a sports car. It's like a sports car for, for water, but it's, it's, it's really gives the experience of flight to everybody. I mean, flying is every boy's and every girl's dream. And now we get this, this infinite freedom to take to the skies. It's actually easier to learn how to fly our vehicle, our flyer, than it is to learn to ride a bicycle. And because we use computers. Um, it's, we use computers to basically all the hard stuff that you don't want to care about as a, as a human pilot. And then we give you a joystick that has a forward and backward, left and right. And it's actually really fun, turns out. It's the fun.